Let's get started. Great to see you here today. So first of all, I'd like you to stand, sit tall, and if you have any questions, could you put them in the question box as we go along, rather than leaving them till the last minute, you'll forget them. So if you put the questions in the question box as we go along, and then I can answer them in the middle and at the end, okay? But you put them in straight away, because otherwise you'll forget. Could you please, please turn off Facebook, Instagram and Twitter? If you know me by now, I love Facebook. <laughs> I'm always on Facebook. I do love it. So please turn it off just for this little while because there's so much information that I want to give you. Um, and as I say, put the questions in as we go along and get a great listening position. Sit up tall. I'm a Pilates instructor, so draw in your deep abdominal and grab a pen and paper because because there will be things that you want to take notes from here. Ladies, gorgeous girls, you are in the right place today if you know that you need something new. You probably aware now that diets lower your metabolism and can make permanent weight loss impossible. And you probably know that starving yourself encourages your beautiful body to actually keep fat rather than the opposite. So we are here today, this afternoon, to create healthy habits which will create success for you. Today we're going to have six. Now one of the gorgeous members I was talking to recently had this beautiful phrase, this is her words, not mine, and she said, if you know your body, you will respect your body. And that's what the whole premise of Get Gorgeous is about understanding and knowing your beautiful body and you respect it because if you know what you're doing you're less likely to do something that's detrimental. So what are we doing here today? Have you seen this little picture before? This is before diet, a little bit of weight to lose. You have a diet, brilliant, it all works. And then after, after, <laughs> And it becomes this big yo-yo effect or this vicious circle. And diets, another lady I was speaking to, you're full of these wonderful phrases that I just write down. Um, a diet actually gives you something to fail on. If there are all these rules and regulations that are very hard to keep up with. And you're set out to fail. It's how can you possibly stick to all the rules and regulations? Your inner teenager comes out and sticks two fingers up at a diet. It just doesn't work. But it's there are neurological programming in your brain that makes you unable to stick to a diet. And there are also science reasons. There are hormonal changes in your body when you diet, and there are metabolic changes in your diet as well. And I'm going to talk about those three things, the brain, neurological, and the two science reasons in detail today. And then there's another thing, the calories in, calories out. We're all told, you know, if you're going to eat loads of sweeties and stuff like that, then go out and have a run. But it, it doesn't really work like that, does it? I mean, I know from my own body and my own, the way that I would do it, I'd go out for a run. I'm training for a half marathon at the moment. It's just something that I like. I'm not going to encourage you to do that. But um, I would then come home and eat a huge bar of chocolate because I thought I deserved it. So it doesn't really work. Calories in doesn't really equal calories out. My little computer has just slowed down a minute. So that's what we're going to go over today. Oh, it's really slowed down. Just give me a minute. There we go. So why are you here today? Well, you're probably confused about the conflicting dietary information. I find it very, very exciting. I'm going to call Michael Mosley Sir Michael Mosley from now on. I'm going to go for that um, accolade for him. I think he deserves it because he's changing. He's making changes in the whole um, nutritional world because he's a person of influence. People, nutritionalists have been talking about this low-fat myth for a long, long time. 
but as a person of influence Michael Mosley is getting it out to the wider public so things are very difficult at the moment because they are changing and I want you here today to learn more about why diets don't work for you and I want you to learn how to lose weight without counting calories, without starving yourself. Or the most important thing that so many women say to me is the eating differently from everybody else in the family. That's not nice to live with. And I know that you are busy. I know you're rushed for time. That's why I really respect and honor that you've taken the time to listen to this. So I am going to make it easy for you. That's my job. It's what I've been trained to do. You are in the right place today if you're a newbie to nutritional education. If you know zitch, then you're here in the right place. Or maybe you are a supreme athlete, an Olympian, <laughs> and you are looking for some exercise fuel tips. Great. Or maybe you're an experienced dieter, and you just know by now that they don't work. Well, the one thing that you're going to learn today is that diets don't work, but here are some nutritional habits that do. Here's my ebook. It's on the website, get-gorgeous.com, and it goes briefly into why diets don't work. Firstly, they distract you. You're a busy, busy lady. You've got lots on your plate, and having another set of rules and obligations is just too much. It's overwhelm. As I said before, a diet makes you feel like a failure. It's a very negative experience being on a diet. It's far too complicated. And if you read the ebook, you'll know that most of the diets don't actually contain any education. There's no reason why you shouldn't be doing anything. You're just told to do it or buy this product or do this. But my view is that once you know what's going on, you are completely less likely to go and do something crazy. You can still go and have chocolates or whatever it is you go for. Why did I say chocolates? It's mine. Um, but you know why you're doing it and you can control what you're doing because you have an education behind you. So generally on a diet, there's nobody there to motivate you. I hope that I've proved in my Facebook Lives, working with me on the walking challenge, it's my big thing, motivation. I absolutely love motivating. I get such a buzz out of chatting to you, talking to you. I love it. It's my thing. And also with diet, sorry, you're emotionally involved. You're so deeply, heavily emotionally involved to the outcome that it's, it's upsetting. It's really upsetting and it's too much energy. It's too much of a drain. Now, if you've got a nutritional habit, it's not as, it's not as draining. It's simple. So that's what you need, an easy strategy like a habit. So tune out now if you feel like this little chap, <laughs> if you're not interested in becoming healthier, fitter, and more shapelier. If you can't commit an hour a week for the next few weeks, tune out. If you're not interested in paying attention to your gorgeous body, then don't worry, there will be other opportunities to join me at a later stage. It's fine. Now, I'm 18 years as a fitness and nutritional professional. That looks quite scary photo, doesn't it? Let's move on. Here are some of the comments that people have made about working with me. This is a Get Gorgeous member. I really enjoy the Get Gorgeous Facebook page. It's like a secret wonderland where everyone is wearing the same shoes. All the ladies are lovely and very motivating prefer a female community where we all understand each other. Prefer your structured approach. I feel with your program everything is in bite-sized chunks and for me that works. Thanks for everything, F. Now that PN means Precision Nutrition Certified Coach, level one. So here is me at, this is in New Zealand actually, this is Les Mills in New Zealand, um, 
I have been a weight loss coach specializing in nutrition and exercise, but I prefer to call myself something a little bit friendlier, a little bit more down to earth, because I think that that's the way that I come across. So I prefer to call myself your gorgeous coach. And I work with a range of health issues and weight issues. I have been working in the Pilates, in fitness industry and specifically the Pilates industry for a long, long time. So I have heard all the stories. I really have. Um, I specialize in safe exercise. I absolutely love what I do. And I have a secret mission to help you enjoy exercise. Now that might feel as if that's a big step and you're really not going to get there. And I've got another secret mission to improve your diet. Even if it's just a little bit at a time, I am going to improve your diet. I'm going to convince you it's a good thing to do. Now not everybody loves exercise. I get that. I didn't love exercise for a very, very long time. But I want to show you, explain to you, this is one of my customers that I've worked with and she wasn't very keen on exercise, but hear what she has to say. Having just got myself ready to tackle my last week's exercises, I got the message from Adele saying the website was down this evening and I could have the night off. Now you would think I would be delighted, I certainly would have in the past, but no, I was gutted. <laughs> so much so that I took the dogs out to the playing fields and jogged, yes, jogged, that is a horror stricken face, twice around the field. What have you done to me, Adele Stickland? I am now addicted to exercise, teeth gnash icon. <laughs> I am a totally different person to the one that started this journey almost 12 weeks ago. I am so thankful I decided to sign up. Thank you so much Adele. Just settling down now with my cup of green tea and a handful of mixed nuts. Life feels great. Big applause. Now how far away do you feel <laughs> from this lady sitting down to a cup of green tea and a handful of mixed nuts? Does that sound crazy? Well, this is what we do on the modules. We try and introduce one habit at a time. And one of those habits is drinking green tea. It's a brilliant resource. It's excellent antioxidant. Don't let me get sidetracked. Focus, Adele, focus. So if this is somebody that wasn't interested in exercise and I've managed to cajole and interest her in exercise by taking it step by step. So here is what you will discover today. That's me in my glasses, looking very uh, clever. Four reasons why diets don't work. But let's not be negative about that. Let's talk about the solutions, what you can do. So I have six solutions for you. I've got the fitness industry secrets, top of the range, what everybody's talking about in the fitness industry. I've got my finger on the pulse all the time. So I want you to avoid telling yourself no to food. It's a negative way of looking at food. This feeling of deprivation, it does more than a sad icon. It makes you feel miserable. And that's not what food should be. Food is glorious. It helps to fuel you, but it also helps to nourish and make your body fantastic. And that's the way I want you to approach your food and your nutrition. When you understand food, you understand your body, then that's how you'll feel. I appreciate that might sound like way off from where you are now. We all comfort eat at times. It's fine, but I don't want you to feel as if you're doing that all the time. I want you to feel as if you deserve it, you're rewarding yourself, and that's grand. No problem at all. So I'm going to give you at the end, a weekly nutritional plan, okay? It's just a rough idea of the things that you could do. One of the ladies has said previously that she thought, well, I won't, I will be, I won't be full enough because there's too many veg on this. Yes, but my way of looking at um, a nutritional plan is I'll increase certain elements and decrease others. And what we've learned in, in nutritional science more recently, well, not recently, a long time ago, but it's coming out now, is that the more you add protein and fat to your diet, 
the less hungry you will be. Okay, so I appreciate that snacking on a red pepper is not going to fill you up. <laughs> I know that. But if you start adding protein and fat, so for on Monday, we've got little chia seeds, they're protein based. So that will keep you a lot fuller boiled eggs. So if you look at this and think, well, that's not enough, don't think about that, wait until you've actually heard everything that goes into this because it's not what you'd expect. Now here am I, this is me, how many years ago, about 20 years ago, I was quite fat, I'll be honest, I was quite fat as a kid, I was always referred to in the family as, as thunder thighs, what a nice, <laughs> nice term and I remember at school trying to um, get ready for the obligatory cross-country race and I tried to train, I tried to do what I was supposed to do and I physically couldn't do it. Fat chance, it was literally way too difficult for someone like me. Trying to do an extreme sport or an extreme race, like a cross-country race, for somebody like me at that size is just not going to happen, it's unrealistic, but I didn't know that, I didn't understand that, I just assumed that I could never do it and that's where I was wrong. But it took me a long time to get there because at university um, I used to um, watch my friends go to an aerobics class um, and I thought well that doesn't look very impressive but I did notice their beautiful legs and these girls that were in um, the house with me used to comment about how the boys commented about their gorgeous legs and I thought okay I'll give it a go. So I went to the first aerobics class when I was at uni and I lasted, I timed it, 5.36 seconds. I was in, I started jumping jacks, I nearly had a heart attack, I was out of breath and I had to leave. It was exhausting. I even had my best leggings on but it wasn't enough. <laughs> it's too fast, too high impact and guess what, who did I blame? Myself. Of course I did, I went to a class, I couldn't do it, whose fault was it? Mine. But it, it, looking back, now I have this different type of knowledge, I know that the young lady that was taking the class was really inexperienced and she shouldn't really have been teaching us at that level. I didn't know that, I blame myself. Now another crunch time came when I started work after I'd left university I started my first job, very very posh, very posh and the very very posh receptionist handed me over my um, health card the, um, for the local health suite and said with a snotty reply, you won't be using this but I jolly well did. I went along to my second aerobics class oh, better not show you that picture yet, went along to my second aerobics class and I loved it, completely different approach. The gentleman who took the class was much older, he was more settled, it was brilliant, I started to get the bug. But I then um, had an injury and I couldn't carry on and then my lovely first son was born Ben. And that just put a scupper on everything really, I couldn't get out to anything, I was working full time and, and exercise was really, really difficult, so I got bigger and bigger and bigger again. I, this is when I tried the diet clubs and I had some success, I did like the diet club at the time but there was something bugging me, I thought why am I doing all this and what does it mean to my body to be doing the, the, the requests and it gave me some very bad food myths at the time, I haven't been able to look at cheese properly until very very recently and this was all hang ups from the nutritional advice that I was being given by these diet clubs. Life started to change when I met my mentor, Patrick Holford, you may or may not know him, he is the um, Good Nutrition Bible, he's brilliant um, and that was in 1998 and he started to change the way I thought about food, I started to go on his courses and I learnt about nutrition and rather than just you know, eating whatever I wanted, I started to understand and piece it all together, so I began to practice food nutrition. But it wasn't all plain sailing, I was tested, my friends would laugh at me, they'd look at all my pills and potions, all my vitamins and say what 
on earth do you want that for? Um, and then I'd have setbacks like work. Work commitments came in and I found it really, really hard. But the big, big gap came when um, I had Ben um, at one age and then it took me another nine years to get my second and third child. I had a big, big problem with infertility, secondary infertility. It was a very, very painful time in my life. And I'm only telling you this because of what it propelled me to do. It propelled me to learn everything I could possibly want to know about my body, why it was letting me down, what was going wrong, and how I could change it. Um, and I did everything. I did Chinese medicine, acupuncture, reflexology, osteo osteopathy, and the most important things that I did was starting with relaxation and meditation. I started to de-stress, and that made a huge difference. And finally, that was my turning point. Here I am today, I'm much more knowledgeable, I understand so much more. I've done years of research to be here with you today, and I want you to benefit from it. Test me. Now, whether or not you ever buy anything from me, you are going to benefit from understanding more about what you eat and how it is making you so unhealthy. If you follow me on Facebook, if you read my emails, you are going to benefit, you are going to understand more about what you're doing and what you're eating. So this is a proper photo. This isn't um, <laughs> this isn't one of these before and after shots. This is a lady, one of the members, who was so pleased with her results. She just had to fling this photo. So it's not very professional, but this is what she was telling us. This get gorgeous member lost nine centimeters. So we don't go on the scales. We measure. She lost nine centimeters off her waist in five weeks. Can you imagine nine centimeters? That's brilliant. Another lost five percent body fat in two weeks. So we, as I say, we don't do scales. We measure proper measurements, tape measurements, and caliper measurements, and six centimeters off her waist. So they are fabulous results. And this might not mean anything to you, but it meant so much to the gorgeous member. Her wedding ring came off for the first time in 10 years and she was over the moon. So test me on this. These Get Gorgeous principles work. You can apply them today. Get Gorgeous is a positive approach to weight loss. Once you have understood or understand the principles of food, it becomes easier to implement forever. You can look at food that you can eat, the food that will make you leaner, fitter, and shapelier, so you make healthy choices. Get Gorgeous is not prescriptive. It's not like you must eat 250 grams of blah, blah, blah. It's much more organic. It's much more working with you, what you do at the moment, and trying to get the best out of it step by step. So it's not a huge overhaul straight away. I would like to say, have you ever considered that it is your diet that is making you feel under the weather? And if you're in the same age group as me, I think you are, then we're getting to a time in our lives where we have to really consider the future. Your metabolic rate decreases year on year and the menopausal tummy starts to come into place. So we have to make changes to carry on with the vitality and the health that we need and want to carry us on through a happy and healthy life. Kickstart. Get gorgeous, leaner, fitter, shapelier you. Kickstart. This is what we're talking about today. Get gorgeous habits. I like to keep things simple. And the simple premise of Get Gorgeous is to increase your protein, increase your fats, and keep your carbs until after exercise. Now, that phrase might completely blow your brain. What the hell are proteins? What fats does she mean? What, what do you mean by carbs? Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not expecting you to understand it all right now. We work together. I explain it, it becomes a habit. Six habits, 
six modules on the Kickstart program. They come to you in a way that you understand, made simple, and the reasons why. Education is the key, is the answer. Exercise will help you to be shapelier and more beautiful. And adherence. Adherence is your feedback. The most successful members have very regularly filled out their adherence sheets. One of every module that you get, filling out those adherence sheets, feed back directly to me and we work on what you found hard, what you found easy, whether you're ready to move on to the next module. These adherence sheets are the key. Diets don't work. This is what we're here to talk about today. Calories in versus calories out. That's what we've all been told. That's what I worked with in the fitness industry for the first 10 years. But these rules are dependent on each other. For example, if you go out for a run, or whatever it is you do, you go out for a 10K walk, 10,000 step walk, I should say, then you're less likely to do anything for the rest of the day. So you increase your exercise and then you rest. They're dependent. They're not independent. If you go out for um, a 10,000 step walk, you're more likely to feel hungry and therefore you eat more. So this whole calories, you, you're going to be starving just by trying to do that. If you increase your exercise, you tend to increase your food. But if you eat the right food, if you increase your proteins and your fats, you're not going to be hungry. So that's the answer. And I know that might seem very, very strange at the moment because you think you just want to eat more and more and more. Yes, you can. But if you eat the right things, you won't be as hungry. But diets don't work because they leave out human biology, as I've just explained. The more you exercise, the more you want to eat. But if I can encourage you to eat the right things, then the whole thing will come together. So if you exercise more, you eat more you expend less energy afterwards, so you actually plateau. Or you can go the other way and you just starve yourself. What happens when you starve yourself? You become lethargic and, dare I say it, cranky, bad-tempered. <laughs> and becoming fat is so often seen as a failure of will or some sort of lack of strength of character, which is pants. It's got nothing to do with strength of character. It is all to do with the function that's going on in your hormones and your brain, okay? So please, don't see yourself as a failure. It's a learning experience. Learn to leave diets alone. <laughs> they don't work. You start on a diet, you feel the restriction, you feel a sense of deprivation, and therefore you start to crave the food that you're depriving yourself of. Oh, what happened to my picture? You give in. Who wouldn't? Who has got the strength to carry on when you're told not to have something? Nobody does. And then you feel guilty. And then this vicious emotional circle starts again. So you start a new diet. You feel the restriction. The only way to win is to deprive myself. No. It doesn't work. Put a big cross through that. There are brain reasons, neurological reasons why this circle happens. You become so emotionally attached to the one thing or the things that you're not allowed to have that you can't have. Your brain actually fixates on the things you're not allowed to have. Your brain chemicals become over-responsive. You become focused on the one thing or the things you're not allowed to have. So the solution is not to feel guilty. If you're going to go and have the cake, the homemade cake that you've had, so be it. Have a positive relationship to food. My way of working is if that you've eaten the right foods during the course of the day, you've exercised and you fancy a piece of cake, Go for it, honey. Don't feel guilty. Don't feel restricted. Don't feel deprivation. And if you're eating the right foods, you won't feel hungry. You'll, the actual urge to eat these foods, like cakes and biscuits, they're not as strong. The feeling is not as strong. And I know, like exercise, that feels like a weird statement, but I know it works.
The other reason, the hormonal reason that diets don't work is because your hormones are chemicals in your body that instruct your body to do certain things. So you've got a hormone called leptin and that tells you, I'm full, I've had enough. And when you're starving, if you hear your stomach growling, that's that home hormone growling away. There's also hormones that control your stress, cortisol. And cortisol is increased the more sugar you have. Now when you go on a diet, the I'm full hormone drops because you're always starving. So leptin drops and the other hormone, I can't pronounce it, ghrelin, goes up. So your hormones change and you become even hungrier. And then you get stressed about being hungry, so cortisol comes into place even more. And cortisol, that stress hormone, that loves sitting on your belly, really loves that little sight around your tummy. And it adds to, and it's even worse, rather, when sugar is involved as well. So if you get stressed, you can't eat anything, you have a blowout, so you go and have two bottles of fizzy drink and a, and a cake, then it, the, the stress and the sugar all sits on your belly. So it all becomes much, much harder. The solution is to balance your hormones, is to feel satiated in the first place. Okay, so prior to the diet, just keep yourself feeling full. Don't you just love this wee chap? I have this condition that prevents me from going on a diet. I get hungry. You and me both. <laughs> we all get hungry, and that's why they don't work. There are metabolic changes in your body. You go into starvation mode, and your body, it's so clever, it will find a way to run itself. Okay, so if you go into starvation mode, they've done these experiments um, and they've looked at um, animals that hibernate. Even if their food is restricted before they hibernate, they still manage to accumulate fat so that they can hibernate. Our bodies are programmed to keep us safe, to keep fat in storage. So do you know how your body runs itself? It takes lean tissue. Do you know what sort of lean tissue? Lean tissue is your muscle, but it's also your organs. Da, da, da. So the solution is don't starve yourself, not ever. Satiate, eat what you need, and you eat the right foods and it works. Here's a happy avocado. He's a happy fat. Say hello to avocados. If you don't like them, learn to like them. <laughs> I'm only joking, but he is a happy fat. So say hello, get used to him, and coconut oil and all sorts of things. If you've done my fats webinar, you'll know all the happy fats that you need to be eating. Saturated, polyunsaturated, monounsaturated fats, but don't let me go down there. Diets don't work because they're based on the wrong science. Calories in versus calories out is the wrong science, and I'll explain why. 10 grams of fat is 50 more calories than 10 grams of carbohydrates or 10 grams of proteins. So the logical thing is if you reduce your calories, so if you eat carbs and proteins that are less calories than fats, then you're eating less calories and you'll lose weight. But it doesn't work because if you eat 10 grams of carbs, your insulin lifts, you, f you get rid of the insulin by um, mopping up the sugar in your body and you get, it drops and then you get hungry again and you eat more and then it drops and then you eat more and it drops. So there's this real undulation, there's this wave of insulin and sugar in your body when you're eating carbs and it means that you're hungry more often. But if you eat fats and proteins, they might be more calories, but you don't get as hungry as quickly. So that's, do you remember my email the last couple of days when the cancer nurse said to me, that's why I don't get hungry if I eat a cheese salad, but I do feel hungry if I've eaten a cheese sandwich. The carbohydrates in the sandwich make you hungry. The cheese and the salad make you less hungry because you haven't got the insulin kick in. It's not as high. That's a big statement and it's a big thing to get your head around. So just 
sit with that. Don't try and understand it too much. But believe me, you're going to eat less if you eat proper food. So insulin is secreted more measured. It means it's more balanced if you're eating proteins. And I want you to think of fat, body fat, like your happy avocado. It's, it's like a wallet. Fat, fatty acids are in your blood system all the time. They can be used in between meals if there is no sugar, insulin in your body. It's not a savings account. Fat isn't stored in the back of beyond to be going found. It is used very, very frequently. And it can be accessed as many times as you want, as long as there's very little sugar in your system. So the solution is to increase your proteins and fats. I know that's a big comment. Here's my little red squirrel. Red squirrels hibernate, apparently. White, um, grey squirrels don't. And this is the research that um, confirms what we've just said. So this is um, a scientist called Mayer, and he found that animals will make fat out of their food under the most unlikely circumstances, even when they're half starved. So that's what I was saying um, about hibernating animals. Even if there's nothing pre-season before they hibernate, they will still get fat. Their body finds a way of getting fat. And Zucker explained why. He said it's because the muscles melt away. Okay, so you will gain fat if you're starving yourself. This is the Eat Well plate, and this is based on out of date research. It's called the Seven Country Study, and a chap called Keys, an American, really, really pushed um, the high carbohydrate, the high orange juice, the high cereal, the high bread content in our diet, because at the time that was what the research was telling us, or that's what he thought the research was telling us. So Keyes is an American chap, and Yudkin was the British counterpart. He's quite a quiet spoken chap, and he believed that sugar was the problem, and sugar is also another term in its simplest form for carbohydrates. Okay, so Keyes went for fats are causing us heart problems, and Yudkin was saying it's sugar. So Keyes won the day in this seven country study, and now the Eat Well plate has got that full of carbohydrates, good ones, but then you go all the way round. So look how many carbohydrates you're eating. Your ancestors weren't eating that, and look at the fats. Tiny, 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 and the fats look like margarine, which is processed fat. It's man-made. It's not even good for you. You've got a tiny bit of dairy and a tiny bit of protein. But this is out of kilter with modern nutritional thinking. It's a hangover from science 30 years ago based on the seven country study that didn't include high fat eating countries. And this belief has been locked into conventional wisdom. So you are early adopters. Just by being here and listening to this information, it means that you are ahead of the game. This is Michael Mosley. You've heard me talk about him a lot. I talked about him at the beginning. Sir Michael Mosley, that's what I'm going for, because he's a person of interest. He's a person of interest, and he is starting to query this conventional wisdom. He is beginning to look back at what Yudkin was saying, the sugar and the carbohydrate link, and he is starting to say, oh dear, we might have got this wrong. He has said, and even two weeks ago, that the research on the low-fat industry only used seven countries. It didn't include France and Germany, and they have high fat consumptions and yet modest rates of heart disease. In now, in 2016, the NHS is burdened with obesity. So there are nutritionalists that would go further than Sir Michael Mosley, <laughs> like Trudy Deacon, and she really, really, really goes on about fats, big, big, big fats. And there, there's this big argument in the industry with the public health department because they're still talking about the eat well plate. So that's why the research at the moment is conflicting. If your researcher is up to date, I guarantee they're going to be saying the same thing as me. We are waiting. We're at the moment. We are waiting for the empirical evidence to catch up. And he is doing a darn good job of getting it out there in the public space. Let me talk about Get Gorgeous Kickstart.
So this is six educational lessons based on the information that you've learned today to form a new healthy habit. And they are very simple to implement. You focus on one thing at a time and you turn something that is impossible into possible. So drinking water, I hope you've done the water challenge. I know it might take a little while to cement, but it does get there. And then we try another habit of exercise, and that's why I tried to get you on the walking challenge, getting you up to 10,000 steps a day, fabulous. And then you've got a habit of trying to eat more good quality protein. And that will satiate you, that will make you fuller for longer. A look at vegetables and how you can do coloured, lots of different coloured vegetables into your diet, which will really help you to make you feel fuller for longer. Carbohydrates. This is what we still need to start revising our thinking. If you're having a high carbohydrate diet, which means, as you saw from the emails, if you're having cereal for breakfast with um, an orange juice followed by a sandwich for lunch and a packet of crisps and maybe a chocolate bar, and then you're having potatoes or pasta for dinner, you are having a high carbohydrate diet. It doesn't feel like you are, but you are, believe me. It's too much for your body, especially if you're not into the habit of exercising. So we talk about this in Get Gorgeous Kickstart, and we explain how you can reduce your carbs and what you can do to replace them to make you feel fuller. We talk about sugar. Sugar is a big subject all on its own and where it hides and what it does to your body. So the first module, water. And one of the things that we talk about quite clearly is the effect of water loss on your body. I don't know if you saw that Facebook comment the other day. We had 60% or 90%. They said we were 90% water. So we're basically cucumbers with anxiety. <laughs> but we are 60% water. And if you lose as little as half a percent, if you're dehydrated by half a percent, could you please go and have a sip of water while I'm saying this, <laughs> then you will affect your heart. It becomes harder for your heart to pump the blood if you're not hydrated. Half a percent, yep. If you get as much as 6%, you become physically exhausted, and little more than that, and you, you, you pass out. Why is water so good? Water helps to dissolve your food. Without water, you can't have that um, process, that digestive process. As a Pilates instructor, I am hugely interested in your spine and keeping your spine and keeping your body beautifully long, holding you strong. If you don't have water, you can't lubricate your joints and you can't plump up the little cushions between your vertebrae in your spine. For ladies of a certain age, water is a temperature regulator. If you're not drinking enough water, then you're going to get hotter. And the body needs water as a catalyst to help you to do things in your body, to help metabolic changes in your body. Water is essential. The second one that we talk about is exercise. Now, did you know that there are three types of exercise? There's cardio, there's flexibility, and there's weight bearing. You need all three types. Cardio is for your heart. It keeps your heart healthy. Your heart is a muscle. It needs to be exercised. Your flexibility is what gives you less likely to injure. The more flexible you are, the more, if you fell over by accident, you're not going to injure if you can, if you can cope with the um, fall. Weight-bearing exercise. Why would you do weight-bearing exercise? It's hugely important for your bone density and it helps to prevent the aging process. It increases your brain power. There's brilliant health reasons why you should be exercising across three different three different um, exercise types. Now what on earth are these? On module three, we talk about protein and increasing your protein in your diet. As I said earlier, if you've got more protein in your diet, your insulin, which is a response to sugar in your body, is more measured. 
with protein rich foods. So you don't get the highs and lows, the insulin high and low. Protein is essential for repair in your body, in your muscles, but also in your cells, okay, all over your body. It's an essential part of your body. Proteins, some proteins are referred to as essential amino acids. There are certain proteins that your body can't make, it can't synthesize within your body. So it means that you have to eat them every day. And they are called essential amino acids. Animal proteins are the best that you can eat. You can also have things like this, which is called chia seeds. They're spelled C-H-I-A, and lots of the ladies add them to their porridge in the morning. Carbohydrates are okay in the morning, but you don't want the morning lunch and dinner. So they'll add a little bit of these, or two tablespoons of these, um, to help make the carbohydrate more protein-based. Um, so here's the Kickstart logo. We talk about vegetables in Module 4, and we talk about vegetables rather than fruit. Fruit is made of fructose, and fructose is a very strong form of sugar, and that sugar doesn't metabolize in the same way in the cells. It goes through the liver, and it causes a lot of problems in the liver. I'm not going to go into too much detail now, but if you can keep to two pieces of fruit a day, that would be brilliant. I'll explain more um, on module four, but for now, just take that. Oh, that's terrible. Just explaining without giving you the reason why. Um, the fruit is overripe now. When our ancestors used to eat fruit, they used to eat it seasonally, and they didn't eat it so overripe. Um, Vegetables are full of micronutrients. Micronutrients are your vitamins and your minerals, so you need your vegetables. And they also have an alkaline load. So if you're eating um, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, they are acid load to your body. And you need to balance the acid. You know your pH 7s. Do you remember that from school? pH 14, pH 0, and you want pH 7. You want a neutral load. And if you eat vegetables, it neutralizes the acid effect of your proteins and fats. Vegetables are good for your digestive health. Carbohydrates. We talk about starchy carbs after exercise. Your body is more receptive to starchy carbs after exercise. Now, starchy carbs are your breads, your vegetables, your sweet potatoes, your chickpeas, your lentils, your pastas. That's bran flakes, I think. That's oats. So these are much better after exercise because after exercise, your sugar in your body, they call it glycogen when it's in your body, is used up. So you need to replenish it. So in Module 5, we talk about eating carbohydrates after exercise and specifying complex carbs. So that would be carbs that would take longer to go through your body. Okay, so brown foods, brown rice, brown bread, rather than simple carbs like white bread, phew, which shoots through your body like there's no tomorrow. Sugar is bad. It's If you're eating simple sugars like white bread or can a fizzy drink or a fizzy juice, your insulin levels go completely out of whack. And after a while, they, they just can't cope. I could talk so much about insulin. But the more sugar you're eating, the more you're at danger of knocking out this very sensitive hormone. Insulin starts to work instantly. If you look at cake, <laughs> your Pavlovian response. Remember the dog? You know the dog that starts to salivate whenever they hear the bell because they've got used to it? Well, your body responds to that insulin production. If you've been eating a lot of sugary subjects, um, foods, then your body starts to react to it really quickly. You get used to it. But if there's more time between your meals, if you're not eating so many carbs and you have a bigger gap, then you start to burn fat. If you're eating a lot of carbs during the day, your body hasn't got a chance to burn fat. It's only burning the carbs. You can't use the fat stores in your body until insulin has left the building. So this is one of the Kickstart worksheets here on the right. That's the protein one. 
Um, there are six of those. There are also six exercise modules, loads of group support, um, soul support, and adherence sheets. And adherence sheets come straight back to me. And that's what you get on the Kickstart program. Here I am reviewing the um, adherence sheets. Habits create success. And healthy nutritional habits, plus your exercise habit, plus the habit of checking in adherence habits. Adherence to me and checking in with your friends and family. They become habits. Here's an example of one of the types of habits, the adherence sheets. And you report your progress on the private forum and on the adherence sheets. You tell me the successes or problems that you've had. And the real advantage is that you can do this at the time that suits you. Soul support, don't underestimate it. You become the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So if you spend time with positive, successful, healthy, weight loss achievers, inevitably their attitudes and success will reflect on you. Your soul community will help you succeed with your goals. You share on the forum your achievements. You get into the habit of positive thinking. So we have self-talk, mind chatter, monkey brain, 50 to 70,000 thoughts per day. Are they positive or negative? What do you say to yourself every day? What does your subconscious hear? Because whatever it hears, is your reality. So if you keep telling yourself you've got a fat bum, that fat bum isn't going to change. If you say to yourself, I've got a groovy bum, I've got a sexy bum, you're going to start appreciating and loving yourself. These daily affirmations are based on facts. There's a French pharmacist and psychologist, and he achieved phenomenal recovery rates in his clinics by teaching his patients, you must have heard this one, every day, in every way, I am feeling better and better. Get into the habit of exercise. Create a weekly exercise habit. So if you want to work your arms, bingo, get it? Bingo wings, arms? No? Okay, terrible joke. If you want to work your legs and bum, the biggest muscle groups in your body, and they help you burn fat more effectively because they're so big, fantastic. It's all here in the Get Gorgeous modules. And you can work on these in the privacy of your own home. Nobody watching but me. And look how much I love exercise. <laughs> That's near the end. It is retrospective. You love it afterwards. You feel great. There is a happy hormone called serotonin. It's like a drug. And sugar releases the same type of drug feeling. They are both addictive, sugar and exercise. They both become addictive. So if I can swap the feeling that you get for sugar now and turn it into an exercise rush, like the lady at the beginning, then hey, you're going to make changes. Now there's a second course, well there's three courses that I present, and the second one is the fundamentals course. This is a lot longer course, it's three to six months, and it has a lot more um, educational videos, workbooks, we talk about fats, we talk about prepping, we talk about fine tuning, the results that you've got, a kitchen makeover with Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen, I'm not fibbing, it's real, no it's not, shopping and soul support, but that's the fundamentals course, I just wanted to mention it. So I'd just like to spend a few seconds asking you what is your biggest aha moment from the last 50 minutes. What have you learnt in the last 50 minutes? What's blown your brain? Or what did you think? Okay, I kind of knew that, but now I really know it. So just put in the question box anything that's just come up. <laughs> I love that, Fiona. That is so clever. Diet. Did I eat that? That is brilliant. I love, can I use that? <laughs> that's so clever. Yes, no wonder it doesn't work. Your brain is thinking that. Of course, so you've understood, Fiona. That's brilliant. That's really good news. That means that the message has come across. Thank you very much. I appreciate that feedback. Feedback. Sorry. Hi, Tracy. Good to see you. Pleased you're here. So please remember that this is not 
theory. These are some real results. Okay, so I take measurements on the fundamentals course, and this is what's happened in three months, in 12 weeks. So I have worked with these habits, affirmations, exercise routines, and nutritional habits to change my life. And I've been using these habits with my clients and refining them for the past 18 years to get to the point where I can offer you a big result in a simple formula. I have done the hard work. I have done the research. You don't have to. So here are some amazing results. Here are general measurements from the neck through the upper arm. The waist is always fascinating. Look at that. She's gone from 101 to 89. She's lost 12% off her waist. I love that. I love that. Body fat, pounds that she's lost. The pulse has got lower. And her average weekly steps have got higher. Amazing. So, before and after photos. I don't have um, as many as you've probably seen. My ladies don't really like the before and after photos. It's more about feeling healthy, feeling energized, learning how to eat the right foods, enjoying your life with your family this summer, and feel happy about foods that you eat, and enough exercise squished into your week. Changing your relationship with food, becoming leaner, fitter, and more shapelier. So I'm not sure why you've showed up here today. It might be that you've never dieted and don't like the sound of it, but want something healthy instead. It may be that you've been working towards your perfect weight for years, but you're still struggling. Maybe you want to find out how to be healthier. Maybe you just want to find out more. All of these are good reasons. Whee! The secret of becoming healthier, leaner, fitter, and shapelier is losing weight without feeling exhausted, knackered the whole time. Creating habits and eating the right foods that will enable you to exercise without feeling starving. Enable you to feel your family to feel proud of you. And you will be able to leave food on the plate. Get Gorgeous is handed out chunk by chunk. It's simple, easy to follow. Get under the skin of your old weight loss psyche and work on changing your beliefs, your subconscious. So in a short period of time, you will lose weight from your waist without dieting. It is not hard work. So the obvious question, how do you apply this program? Well, you have a choice. You can do it slow. Spend hours, make decisions on what to eat based on your own trial and error. And let's be honest, if you are time poor, it might not seem the viable option. It might even cost you more money. Or you can do it quickly using my full kickstart six-step process. It's designed to give you permanent healthy eating and weight loss, working on five different fronts, education, exercise, soul support, adherence and measurements. It is the cheapest, easiest way from getting overweight and tired to feeling fit and healthier, to stop feeling guilty about food, depressed about where you feel, and leaving your happiness on the table. You can start these healthy nutritional habits right now. So what exactly is Get Gorgeous Kickstart? Well, it's nutritional food modules and exercise classes. They're delivered via emails. All you need is Wi-Fi. You then get access to the private member's website. And at the end of each module, you send back your completed adherence sheet. You eat like you love yourself, move like it, speak like it, and act like you love yourself. Here's the Get Gorgeous program, exercise video, nutritional videos, adherence sheets, and measurements. So module one is ready for you now. Your progress is inevitable because it's broken down and it works at your pace. It complements your existing way of life and your new understanding of body and your food. So it creates a long-term habit. Here are some of the results that we've had together. And as I said before, Pulse and heart rate, really important, as well as body fats, and measurements through the waist. So how much is this going to cost? Well, it's cost me thousands of pounds, coaching, mentoring, course fees, experience. I've invested a lot of money, and you can join for a fraction of the cost. 
Now, if you consider that I'm at least £85 consultancy fee, but you get access to me on the programme, and I'm booked up so it's the only way to get access, this is going to be cheaper than your gym membership. It's not going to cost you £25. Grand. It's going to cost you £89. Really? Yes. Six weeks Kickstarter, six modules, doesn't have to be six weeks, £89. But if you're feeling nervous, you can have a full money back guarantee, no questions asked. So you are actually saving 25 grand. <laughs> this is what you do. Go to this page right now, get-gorgeous.com. You see that little green button that says join online today? Press it. Go on, press that green button and it will take you to this page getgorgeous.com, jump in, and it will show you the Kickstarter logo. You've seen that. That's scary me. And you can become a member for £89. You will get six exercise videos, six food education videos, six weight loss habits, and six accountability reports. And you get six worksheets as well, the one that I showed you earlier. So let's do it. Let's go to getgorgeous.com, jump in. Just click that green button and this is the page that you'll get. Click on Kickstart. Oh, I've got a bonus offer, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> the first three people that do that right now, I will send them the three day dietary record, fill it out, send it back to me and I will look at your diet and help you to change. I can only do it with three people, it's, it's quite a lot of work but it will something that will help you for the rest of your life. So once you've gone to jump in and you've clicked this, you're going to create a username, fill in your first name, your last name, your email, put in your password twice, one there and one there, and then your address. And then you're, you're in. So you're a new user. Well done. So that bonus offer is only available to the first three people. Oh, thank you. I'm getting lots of feedback from customers. Thank you very much. So I'm just going to leave it on that page, getgorgeous.com, jump in, and that kickstart thing, while I just have a look through the questions, because we're coming to the end of the session, and I just want to ask, answer all the questions. So. Well done, good insight, Philippa. She knows that she needs to um, drink more water. Fantastic. That is the first step, drinking more water. Once you've understood that, you can get so much healthier and you can change your metabolism, as simple as that. I'm spending a few seconds trying to add the um, worksheet. Forgive me for faffing about. Oh, 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 sorry. I might have to email it to you ladies. So jump in, join me, and I really look forward to working with you. I get very excited working with new customers, new clients. I like hearing your stories. Oh, honey, yeah, well said. So one of the um, customers has said that she knows the rules, but stressful issues take over, and I get that. It always does, which results in wine, sugar, and then munchies occur. Yes, you understand. And understanding is half the battle. Once you've understood that that's what you're doing, my design is to make sure that when those stressful situations occur, and they do for all of us, that you can cope with those stressful situations because you are in a situation where you're not... Um, you're satiated before you get in. You're in a better frame of mind before you go into those situations. And that's what helps to get you through. So somebody's asking about type 1 diabetes with the diet. Do you have any specialist help? That's a brilliant question. We need to work together. Um, this gives you an overview. So don't, this is 
knowledge that will help with your diabetes okay it's just it's good common sense knowledge um, if you want more specialist advice then you probably need to go on to a higher module with me maybe even the premier module so if you have a look at getgorgeous.com jump in um, you'll see that there's three levels that you can work at I'm just talking about the first level level today which is kickstart but if you want more one-to-one -one advice then please feel free to um, log into the premier support that I can offer you. Thank you, lovely Lucy. Can you recommend a bread that has no sugar in it? Well, to be honest, I wouldn't go with bread. Why bother with bread? Why don't you have something that's going to completely um, vary your diet? It, it's bread that's making us, it, it's more carbohydrates. If you, As I said at the beginning, if you're having cereal, a bread sandwich, and then pasta and potatoes for dinner, you're eating a huge amount of carbohydrates. You're eating a high carbohydrate diet. So can I recommend a bread that has no sugar in it? No, because I don't want you eating so much bread. <laughs> Why don't you have a cheese salad instead of a cheese sandwich? It will make you feel fuller for longer. So it slightly worries me because it means that the education that I'm offering um, hasn't really sunk in. I know that it's going to take a while to sink in. So that's why we work on the modules and we spend the time on the modules to do it. Right, I'm going to try one more time. No, it won't upload. I'm trying one more time to upload the handout. I will email you. I can see who's on the call on the uh, workshop, so I will email you the weekly planner. I'm going to say goodbye now because we have really run over time and I know that you're busy. I have opened up my diary. I have got 15 minutes, not only 15 minutes, 15 minute slots in my diary. The email that will come out in the next half an hour will give you access to my diary. If you've got any more questions about the Kickstart program, please feel free to spend 15 minutes chatting to me, airing your concerns, and I will be very, very happy to talk to you about that. Okay, so I'll send out the email with the recording, with a, a link to my diary, and I will also send you special people the weekly meal planner. So thank you so much for joining me today. Take care, my lovelies, and I will speak to you soon. Bye.